Come on in and sit down. You cut the hardcore crew chewing the fat. You cut us shooting the shit. You cut us in the moment. Hello, everyone. Welcome to HWR's second annual year end awards. I am your hardcore host, Rick Head, and we got a full house tonight. First, from WGS TV, he's the wrestle gamer, Billy Boudreau. Billy, thanks for joining us tonight. And a distant galaxy. Long ago, far, far away. Oh, wait. No, wait. That's the wrong thing. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, well, Billy is from a, a distant galaxy far, far away. Don't let him kid you, folks. Uh, and we would like to welcome back from the CWA tour, he's Joseph Knight. Joe, welcome back. Holy cow, I'm back. It's been a while. Things in the country have been crazy. TNA finally moving to some place where less viewers will be watching them. Stuff in the WWE still going crazy. And us in the CWA just got my whole, my new camera equipment, so... We should be getting ready next month. And, of course, we have the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how are we doing? Pretty good, and we did have a uh, award handed out before the show started. It was for the movie of the year. It is the interview because fuck North Korea. (laughs) Sorry, that was my fault. (laughs) And last, and certainly not least... We have the iVlog tag team back in together, which we have not had them together for in a while. So we have the Bay Area MVP, and we have James from the Big Easy. Guys, it's good to have you back together. Uh, we're not together like that, so no. And I just say, F iVlog. Well, okay, well, you guys are the H- we'll call you now the HWR tag team. How's that sound? Thank God. <laughs> what about Twitch? Well, I don't think one of them is on Twitch, I, I, but we all both know that they're both on HWR, so... MVP is not on Twitch. I'm on SoundCloud. But right now, we're, for this week, we're going to be doing the year-end awards before we take our uh, two-week break for the uh, holidays. So, let's get on to the actual awards. First awards is, of course, the Wrestler of the Year. Now, guys, we have a few guys we talked about, wrestlers we would like to talk about. We have Seth Rollins, John Cena... Dean Ambrose, and Bobby Roode. Now, if you really want to ask, I mean, this is a really, high, really good long list to talk about for guys who should be for the wrestlers of the year. You know what? Joe, you've been gone for a while. If you could pick, who would your, you know, your vote be for the wrestler of the year? Huh. You know what? I'm, I, I'm looking at this list, and it, it's sad to say that we only have one TNA person in there, but... If you want to say the one that did the most impact, that actually got entertaining and he's got a hell of a push, I got to say he's Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, all right. All right, uh, James, over to you. I'm going to have to say Seth Rollins because he is Mr. Money in a Bank and that heel turn did help him out. So, Seth, for me. All righty. Billy, stop backing up. Sorry. <laughs> As we go over to Billy, Billy... Who would yours, yours pick be? Well, I'm kind of agreeing with what, uh, what Mr. Knight had to say about Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose has, has had a phenomenal year. Um, if not, Roman Reigns would be right up there with him, in my opinion. But uh, I think a lot of people are, when, especially when he got selected to be uh, Superstar of the Year for WWE, they're all up in arms on the fact that he hadn't been there the whole year. In fact, he, that he went out back in August, so that's why... A lot of fans are really up in arms that he missed the last four months of the year. but So that's why I'm going to put him right up there in second place. And i I got to go to Dean Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose has just had an amazing year. Um, you know, he's had an incredible breakout. I mean, the guy has just risen the popularity in the WWE. And you really can't deny any of his promo skills. The, the dude's nuts, but he knows what he's doing. And when you know what you're doing on the microphone and you know how to work the crowd, that's when you start making money in the wrestling industry. Mr. Knight, am I right or am I right? Absolutely, I have to agree with you. Lance, over to you. Well, I think I'm going to concur with uh, Joe with uh, the Lunatic Friends because, well, we thought he might go down once the uh, shield broke up. Boy, were we wrong. That boy took off to the moon. He just went straight to the top. Or he's heading for the top because, well, let's face it, he hadn't had a title or a uh, the, the title yet. Most of the Brock's had it, but yeah, he, Dick Lunatic Friends, Dean Ambrose. All you right, know, you know, Rick, I want I want to throw in something real quick. It took him a while for them to get the ball rolling with him, but once they got 
rolling with Dean Ambrose. I mean, it. This it's a guy that really, you know, he should be. He should be really up there for as a future champion. You know, I I, I have to agree with you. And uh, you know what? Well, I'm gonna throw my name in the hat for Dean Ambrose. Uh, Will, over to you. Uh, my pick is gonna be Mick Foley Jr. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm taking that Steen Ambrose. <laughs> yes. I mean, if anybody did watch the TLC pay-per-view, yes. I mean, who would have thought a TV would explode in his face? But overall, uh, jokes aside, Dean Ambrose, I mean, after the Shield and Wyatt family broke up, who would have thought that he and Wyatt were still going to feud after all this time? I mean, look at the build-up for the storyline. Excellent. He hasn't got a title yet. Except the U.S. title he had singly, but I said it here three months ago on Hard Wrestling Radio. He won't get the IC title, but if put in the right situation, he'll get a world title, but my vote will be Dean Ambrose. I'm on board. Yeah, and of course, so that means for the Wrestle of the Year, for HWR's Wrestle of the Year is Dean Ambrose, folks. So, And now we got to get on to well, the Diva of the Year, and you know... Not a lot of us here really do our big Diva fans, but you know what? Let's go over to our Divas correspondent, James. You have the first pick. For me, it's either between AJ Lee or Paige. Because here's your thing with uh, AJ and Paige. AJ, the longest reigning Divas champion and has been three, a three-time Divas champion. While Paige, I'm looking also in the NXT. She was the NXT Women's Champion. The youngest Divas champion, a two-time Divas champion, and held both of them at the same time when she debuted. But my advantage has to be AJ. So um, I- I'm going to give it to AJ because of the fact of how sh- relevant she's been, even with her three months out. So that's AJ for me. All right. Will, over to you. I'm going to have to agree. Name me any diva that could put submission holds and could do the Shining Wizard. Thank you. That answers my question. AJ wins. Next. All right. Now, Joe, I know you are not a big fan of the divas division, but if you could pick one of these divas, who would your pick be? You know what? I'm going through the list, and I look at the 16-year-old, I look at the 18-year-old, and then I look at the two, uh, the two Bella Bottoms, you know. I have to say, you guys, and you guys don't realize this, but Diva of the Year is Stephanie McMahon in my book. Her match at SummerSlam, her that match that she had, still shows that she can get in the ring and still do it. Plus that big heel thing, the the corporation with Triple H, it still shows that she's a valuable member of the WWE. This is a person that can wrestle, act, and run a company. Now, that's good, but she can get in there and run the company. And we all were shocked when we did see that match. It was, it was a great match. You know, and she's the, she's, look, if you compare to the other divas, she's the oldest out of all of them. And she put on a hell of, if she can do it, then everybody else, there's no reason why these other people on this list cannot take it to the next step. Say what you will about AJ and Paige and all that stuff. I, they don't impress me. Stephanie impressed me with her acting and the boobs. <laughs> all right. Um, Billy, over to you. Well, you know what? I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to go against everybody, and I'm going to say Paige. Because oh. based on the fact that, you know, she's had a marvelous year. She debuted in an explosive fashion. I mean, one of the best in the NXT Divas to finally make her way to the WWE Divas roster to improve it. I said improve it because there are very few Divas in the WWE that actually have actual credible in-ring talent. You know, and I can only, I can name about three of them, three to five of them on one hand. Paige is definitely right there at the top in my book. She is my selection. All right, and Lance, over to you. Well... Well, Paige and A, like, it's pretty much down to Paige and AJ because they were the only two that kept the uh, Divas division from 99.9% of the time being complete piss break matches. And so, and I got to go with, and y'all probably don't know what I'm going to say here, hashtag that ass AJ Lee. And you know what? I, I got to jump on the, the boat here now. Don't get me wrong. Um, when I first saw Paige, 
I thought she was a little bit of green here, and she has gotten a little bit better. She's better now. I know that Joe doesn't like them for obviously because of their size and the age look, but you know what? I like both Paige and AJ, and I both think that they both do have problems as far as talent. They do the only two divas that do have any talent, um, so they do need to bring some of the the NXT divas up. So it's clear. But if I had to go with, with AJ over Paige, I, I definitely have to pick AJ myself. So I think right now we have a clear diva of the year, and that's AJ Lee. And now we're going to go over next to the NXT. Yes, we're going to jump over there. Which NXT? I've been watching NXT the past couple of weeks, and they have really, really. Imp- impressing me, and I'm not the only one. I think I speak for the rest of us. Um, Joe, I don't know if you've been watching NXT at all? You know what? I, that's the only wrestling independent, I call it independent, because it it, it, represent, it actually resembles an independent company. It, it got, it's got that tight uh, arena feel. They, the, the superstars can come in and do what they want. You know, it, it, it's it's a great. I, I look at that as a, the best wrestling on TV today. You know, say what you will about the WWE. It's big. It's got everything, and you got TNA that's lost somewhere in Alaska. I don't know, discovering, discovering America, whatever the hell the channel's called. But NXT is what I really sit down and I have to DVR it, or I just see reruns of it on my tablet when I can. It, you know. If I look at all the the people you have here, the four nominees, I, it's hard to pick one because I think everybody in here. But I gotta go. Uh, if I had to take one, I'll have to say uh, Sami Zayn. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, Lance, over to you. Well, when I look at these, I see three names I really recognize. I see Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville, which how can you- those definitely should be in here, especially for that match they put on last Thursday. And Tyler Breeze will, to me, I must remember him. Granted, I don't watch NXT that much, but I know him as the guy who broke the network WrestleMania the uh, week before WrestleMania. Anyway, I'll give it to Sami Zayn. Okay. Um. Real quick, while we're here, uh, you know what I. I... I know all the, the all four of these guys, and if I really had to, the two bottom guys to me just don't deserve it. Uh, Baron Corbin has been doing squash match after squash match after squash match, so he doesn't even deserve to be on this list. I'm sorry. I think he's only on this list because there's only a few other NXT stars that really deserve to be on this list at this moment. Um, so if I had to go, um, uh, it's hard because between uh, Neville and Zayn because they both are tremendous wrestlers. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna pick uh, Neville. Just to go against the grain for once. Um, Billy, over to you. Well, you're not the only one that's going against the grain. Got to go with the man of that gravity for God, Adrian Neville. I mean, how can you not look at this guy and see wrestler of the year potential for NXT? I mean, and everything he's done, you know, the spectacular moves. In fact, you even just look at the top 60 moves of Pac, a.k.a. Adrian Neville, and the things that he did all over the Indies in leading into NXT – it was just leave your jaw dropping, your eyes bugging, now saying, how in the hell did he do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, James, over to you. I'm going to go with the man that gravity forgot. I think, you know, for the entire, almost the entire year, he has held that NXT title. But after winning it from Bill Dallas on NXT Arrival and how much he's been defending it for a while. So I had to go with Neville. All right. Will, over to you. I'm going to go Zane here. I mean, the Haluva kick, the Blue River power bomb, whatever you call it, and his even his road to redemption to the title within that month's past, how he beat Tyson Kidd, Tyler Breeze, many other stars. You cannot deny Sami Zayn was hungry for the title. So, hands down, Sami Zayn. And next year, he's going to lead NXT to a whole new beginning. So that's my pick. Okay, and you know what, guys? We have a tie. We have three and three. So what we're going to have to do, guys, we might have to leave this up to the HWR fans. What we're going to do is we're going to be posting these on our Facebook page, and they're the ones who's going to have to make the actual decision. So later on tonight, we'll be posting these uh, tiebreakers on our Facebook page, and they're the ones who will have to make the ultimate decision. So we're going to move on to the next one, the NXT Diva of the Year. We're going to get over to... Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Becky Lynch. 
We have to go back to James. James, what are your picks? I'd say Charlotte. Paige, uh, I would have put Paige, but since she debuted after Mania, I can't put her in, so I give her honorable mention. But Charlotte, ever since she won the title and broke away from the BFF, she's been dominant as a champion, and that's who I pick, Charlotte. Even though Bailey is the fan favorite, Charlotte is the pick. All right. Will, over to you. And I'm not going to jump on the Charlotte bandwagon because after recent months of me watching the boss of NXT, I'm going Sasha Banks here. People keep saying she's a weak wrestler. Have you guys watched her moveset, the bank statement, and the bank judgment? People have been hating on her ever since, but she can wrestle. She knows submissions. She could do her karate. So I'm going Sasha Banks. You know what, Will? I'm going to jump on that. And believe it or not, I was the same way when I first saw her. I was hating on her, but you know what? She can wrestle, and i, I got to go with the Boston girl myself. So you can say that I'm, I'm backing up a Boston girl, but yeah, she's got it. So uh, I'll back you up on that one. Uh, Billy, your pick. Bailey, because I want a hug from her. All right. Joe, over to you. Wow, it's a tough decision. I mean, I was my first choice was, was going to be, woo, his daughter, Charlotte. You know, it, it's such a toss-up, but I have to agree with the panel, Sasha Banks. I have, that's what I'm going to lean to, Sasha. And finally, over to you, Lance. Well, I'm, I'm going Charlotte because, well, she's got the bloodline. From what I've seen, she's got the ability, and she's really impressed me lately. With an honorable mention to Bailey, because, well, like Billy said, I want a hug. I mean, who wouldn't? Exactly. Well, some people wouldn't want more than a hug, but, you know, hey, that's just uh, HWI here. <laughs> <laughs> Good rhymes will hug me. <laughs> so, uh, now we're going to move over to TNA, so we're going to give TNA a little bit of respect. To the knockout of the year, we have Gail Kim, Karen Terrell, Ange- uh, In- Angelina Love, Havoc and Madison Rain. Again, James, your ID correspondent, who's your pick? I'm going to have to go with Gail Kim. I mean, she's on and off, but I think she's the consistent knockout. So I have to go Gail Kim with this one. All right, Will, over to you. I'm going to go turn to Rel. If everybody forgot that match between her and Gail Kim, that was one of the best matches TNA will ever have in 2014. Other than that, I see nobody else that can fit it right now, so I'll have to say Terrence Terrell. Yeah, I don't think I agree with uh, Will there about Terrence Terrell. Ever since she, she came back, she was an amazing knockout. I mean, she, she was taking bumps that most normal female uh, talent don't do. You know, she, and you would look at some of the things that she she's done. I think, if I memory serves me, she did take a bump on top of the steel steps. I mean, how many times can you say that the WWE divas have actually done something as extreme as what Taryn Terrell does whenever she's working a match? And especially when she's working against Gail Kim, those are, that's always a match to see. So I'm, I'm definitely going to go with Taryn Terrell. Yeah. Joe, over to you. I'm going to agree with the panel. Taryn Terrell, ever she, since she came back, she's been... The leading face of the knockout division. Lance, over to you. Well, I'll actually go on Gail Kim because she, oh, year in, year out, she's been one of the, either the top or number two in, to me, in the in the knockout locker room. Yes, she, I mean, she had the uh, matches with, uh, those great matches with Taryn Terrell, and she also had, basically got the hell beaten out of her by Havoc, which... To me, toughness plays a huge factor in it, so I'm going Gail Kim. And two, her husband scares me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to say that Gail Kim is a ter- uh, terrific wrestler, but you know what? Taryn Terrell has always taken those bumps. She's always shown that she could just take that match and could just go one extra. You know, you know. Plus, she's done ladder matches. She's done cage matches. You know what? Uh, I, I got to go all the way with Taryn Terrell. So I'm, I'm with the, uh, I'm jumping on the bandwagon here. So, so for the knockout of the year for 2015, 2014, excuse me, I'm already getting into the, in the next year is Taryn Terrell. And then we're going to do the tag team of the year. And now this, you know, we're going to do the Usos. Golden Stardust, Damian Mizdow, the Wyatt, and we even have an NXT tag team, the Ascension guys. So we are, we are kind of jumping in, you know, under both, you know, both brands here on this one. You want Joe? I'm going to jump over to you. What's your picks? You know, as, as I find the Miz and Mizdow funny, 
I still got to go for gold and Stardust. I'm, and again, I'm going to def- have, and I was a Cody hater. Every, all the fans know who li- have listened to, to HWR know how much I hated Cody. Yet with him becoming Stardust, he has improved. And with his brother at his side, they have far surpassed any team that's been in the division so far. So, I, you know, you can't deny Cody's is, is funny now. He's filling in. He's getting into the role more. He can soon replace Gold Dust when the time comes. So Gold and Stardust are it's the people I choose. My vote. Okay. Um, Billy, over to you. Now keep in mind, this is a pick. This is not for a vote. I'm definitely got to go with the most dominant tag team ever in NXT. And when they make their debut soon to the main roster, because we've seen the vignettes this past week for the Ascension, Connor and Victor, they will make the tag team division in WWE that much better. And, you know, I, I do like the Ascension. I really thought they were really dominant. Um, there's so many more tag teams in here that's really done a lot of great, and it, it's hard because this list is a really hard list to pick from. You know what? I, I got to go with Golden Stardust, to be honest with you, because they, they've really done, they've been really impressive. So I'm going to go, I'm going to jump on the Golden Stardust bandwagon because just like they said, you know, like Joe said, you know what? Uh, you know, Cody, you know, Cody Rhodes has really, you know, found his niche, and this is the niche that he's found, and they've done so well with him. So that's going to just be my pick on this one. Lance, over to you. Oh, um, this is very a uh, very difficult one to pick. I mean, but it's to me, it's between Golden Stardust and The Miz and Damian Mizdow. While I love the way I call them Dusty's boys, the um how meant just the amount that Miz and Mizdow got over, I gotta go Miz and Mizdow. All right, and James, over to you. Miz and Mizdow are a new tag team. I'm going to go with the Usos with this one because, you know, they won the tag team titles in the beginning of the year, and as I say, they're a consistent tag team, so I'm going to go Usos. And, Will, over to you. I like the Usos. They're very consistent, but one team is on this list that's not on here, and I'm disappointed in all five of you for not looking at this tag team. I'm going with Enzo Amore and Big Cass here. They're up there. I mean, two Italians who has a beautiful diva and Carmella. And as much as I'm not going to rip Billy for saying the Ascension, the Ascension should have been there since August. August. But, I mean, they should have been up there, but I'm going to go Kaz and Amari here. They're very charismatic. They can do the ring. And what's not to take from a big and a tall guy? I feel like, I feel like because um, I think it was Enzo that came back from injury. That's why I'm not picking them. That's why... It's like maybe Usos or the Ascension. Yeah, but you can't deny the fact when he came off the injury, he's just been good. Kaz has been holding his own in singles competition. Did you see the match between them and the Legionnaires? Go back and watch that match. Yes, I've seen it. Then there you go. Okay. So, Will, you're not... Mention not... Amore, he's a, not to mention Amore is a G, and you can't teach that. Mm-hmm. So, we, so there is Will's pick, and then, of course, we all have our own picks, so... All right, we are now going to move on to the breakout style of the year, and of course, this we are back to voting. The, it, the picks are the, the nominee. Excuse me, the nominees are Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Rusev, and Bray Wyatt. So, uh, Joe, I'm going to start with you. Huh, breakout star. That this is a tough one. I would love to count Roman Reigns, but due to his injury, he's kind of his momentum has stopped. Steph Rollins, as much as I want to give it to him, I think, you know, he got it too easy. And I would take Rusev off the list and put Lana, because Lana's the one that actually broke out. She's the one that was the only reason we watch Rusev. Uh, you know, so Lana will have my pick. Uh, you know what? Breakout star, I'm going to go for the, that insane guy again, Dean Ambrose. I mean, he, same reason as before. The man has shown that he doesn't need anybody backing him. He doesn't need the corporation. He doesn't need anybody. He went in there, and it's he's he's done stuff that even probably 
Mick Foley will probably say, damn. Mm-hmm. So I got to I gotta go Dean Ambrose. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you, Joe. Um, while I do not deny that Dean Ambrose should be a breakout star, I'm going to disagree with you. I am going to go with Rusev because Rusev has that huge heat, and he is totally over as a heel. Um, he has beaten everyone that's in his path. So, And to have that sexy Lana... It's, it's just a very nice mix. So, you know, you could put her, you know, it possibly in that. You could put Rusev and Lana. I got to go with Rusev. Anybody who has, you know, would say that he does not, has not, you know, been a breakout star of the year, just is just hating on the guy completely. And if you want to hate on him, then he's, you know, done his job. So I'm going with Rusev. Um, Lance, over to you. Of all these guys, I can't give it to Rusev. Mainly, he's had a, he's had a few, let's call it, worst matches of the night. Which, like, especially uh, last pay per view, we all were saying he uh, they basically had that live via satellite. Which I'm so I just can't give a breakout star that to me that can't be. To me, it's down to two guys, the two crazy ass bastards on this list: Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt. When I look at promos and match quality, I have to give it to uh, Dean Ambrose because. There at the beginning, about mid part of the year, Bray was a little lacking while Dean just went straight to the top. So, Dean Ambrose. All right. And Billy, over to you. Can I make a small amendment to Joe's pick? When he said Lana, I think he really meant Lana's top, her breakout star of the year, if you kind of get what I'm saying there. Um, as far as the, these nominees go, yes, there, there are a lot of them, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to Bray Wyatt. And, and let me tell you why. The, the way that he started out and the way that he's, his character has just grown in the WWE is really, really amazing in my opinion. He, you know, he's very charismatic. He really knows how to work a promo, just as good as Dean Ambrose, if I might say. And the fact that, you know, he's really cryptic, you, you never really know – what he's saying, and the fact that he's gone from having people chanting Husky Harris to actually chanting Wyatt at some time is just nothing short of amazing. So that's why I'm going to Bray Wyatt for Breakout Star of the Year. All right, and Will, over to you. Did anybody pick Heisenreich? I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Will, have you been thinking this fucking all? Right. No, I'm going to actually give this one to Seth Rollins. I mean... Look at what he's done. Not, let's just forget about the money in the bank briefcase he has right now. Let's talk about overall. When he broke in the shield, the, he can pull matches. He even won a Dolph Ziggler at one point. So I'm, I'm going to go with Seth Rollins. But uh, Dean Ambrose uh, does win the breakout style of the year. And, of course, after that, the rest of the votes were pretty much almost well, divided right down the line. So, uh, But surprisingly, I Roman I don't Reigns, get to say anything. Oh, so, says I know. I'm sorry. I forgot James. My apologies. I'm sorry, James. Your pick, please. I'm going to go. Oh, you know, James was very forgettable. No, but I'm going to go with the superstar of the year because, really, Dean Ambrose, I have to agree with the Slammies. He, he's been doing a lot, and we thought he was going to be one of those uh, falling grace, but he's been proving himself lately, so Dean Ambrose. Okay, sorry about that, James. And yeah, and so yes, but again, um, Dean Ambrose does get the, the breakout star of the year. But let's move on to the oh my god moment of the year. We have Sting at Survivor Series, Undertaker loses the WrestleMania streak, Seth Rollins turns on the Shield, and of course this one, Kevin Owens turns on Sami Zayn on NXT. Billy, I'm going to start off with you. How can you not look at what happened with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and not say that that wasn't an OMG shocking moment of the year, especially when it's on the night of Kevin Owens' debut, not only that, given the the history that that they've had in the indie circuit, you know, of course, Kevin Steen and El Generico, that, you know, it's it's a perfect match. They know each other well. They have great chemistry, and I, I really look forward to what they do with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the very near future, i got to tell you, it's going to be something uh, worth watching on NXT. 
Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you, Billy. And uh, that's going to be my pick right now while we're talking about that. So, yeah, uh, I was shocked while I was doing the report. I thought it was all over, and they did it at the perfect time right when the credits were rolling. And I thought, okay, yeah, it's all over. And all of a sudden, you see Sami Zayn get floored by Kevin Owens. And I'm like, what the hell? I look, and I drop everything. And then you see Kevin Owens pick him up, and he gets powerbombed right on the corner of the apron. And I'm like, wow. And that was just like, what a move that was. And it was incredible, shocking. Uh, Joe, your pick. Well, guys, that's a great point that you made. It's a great wrestling point. But let's go. You want to go, oh, my God, moment. Okay? You got to go with The Undertaker losing his WrestleMania streak. Say what you will. The Undertaker's past the time and all that. It's not that... You know, it wasn't the wrestling match that was great, because it wasn't. It was the reaction of the fans who couldn't accept somebody finally beating The Undertaker. <laughs> and, yeah. And, okay. and the thing was, it wasn't even that. It was all over oh. the news. It was all over every media network and, so, and social media out there of The Undertaker losing. And I have to say, the world became a world full of marks who couldn't believe that The Undertaker finally lost. And people took it serious. That was my oh my god moment. I can't believe people actually took it seriously. That they just stood there stunned like the world is coming to an end. So Undertaker losing at WrestleMania was that moment for me. Yeah, and, and that's very understandable in the way you looked at it that way. For me, I was just like, you know, I think we all kind of knew he was going to lose, but the way, the reaction, I think I can more understand that. Um, Will, over to you. Sorry, as my Taco Bell just got here. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm going to actually say Sting finally coming into a WWE arena. It took him how long? 12, 13 years? At the least. <laughs> and I'm going to say, with all due respect, I've been a Sting fan since he was in the NWA days in WCW. And for him to change the leverage right now with the authority and, you know, forget the contract, you know, the standoff of Triple H is marvelous. So we'll see Sting Triple H WrestleMania. And, you know, better later than never, that crowd reaction was shocking. And Michael Cole saying, oh, my God, it labels what it is. So I'm saying Sting finally making a WWE appearance. All right. James, over to you. Just being at WrestleMania, I have to pick The Undertaker because that crowd reaction was silent. We were like, what the hell? What? Oh, my God. The Undertaker finally lost. And what – uh. And uh, I agree with uh, what uh, Joe said, so that's my pick. All right. And finally, Lance, over to you. Well, I'm going uh, with Undertaker loses the streak for a f- one main reason. It shut the crowd up. As in, <laughs> in, and, and also, y'all, everybody listening to the show, show probably knows about pretty much the crew we usually, uh, ha- the calls we usually have while we're watching pay-per-views. It shut us the hell up. And when it can shut us the hell up, they did something. Yeah. You know, it, both me and James can attest to this. We could actually hear a pin drop in the Superdome after the Undertaker lost at WrestleMania. It so was that yeah, quiet. And we now have a winner, of course. It's the Undertaker loses the streak at WrestleMania 30. And, you know... It was almost, like I said, it was a shocking, but I mean, I guess to a point we should have seen it coming, but again, hey, there it is. Um, now, let's go on to the next, uh, it's called the What the Fuck Award. Now, this is not to be confused to the Oh My God. I think the Oh My God was more of like a shocking where What the Fuck is like, what, was it, what, what did we just see, you know? Um, we, one, we have Angry Cat. Uh, we have the um, Larry the Cable Guy can overall. I, can I correct you on something? I think you mean Grumpy Cat. A grumpy cat, angry cat, grumpy cat shows you how well I really pay attention to it. Team Cena versus Team Authority wins the match of the year, and Rome, uh, Roman Reigns wins Superstar of the Year. Now, you know what, Billy? I'm going to give you the first pick on this one. You know, you know, I know a lot of fans out there are up in arms. You know, even discussed this a little bit about it on on WGS TV with the fact that Roman Reigns was selected to be Superstar of the Year. But I think in my in my mind. The thing that really stood out to me is the fact that Team Cena versus Team Authority won Match of the Year 
And the Slammies, I mean, give me a break. I'm, I'm not going to discredit the matchup in itself. It had a lot of good spots in it, including uh, you know, Sting's debut, which is an OMG moment in, in, in itself, you know, whether it was on Lord or not. It's, it's still got everybody talking about that. But there are a lot of other matches that could have been selected that were probably more qualified. The main event at WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan, Batista, Randy Orton, the Hell in the Cell match with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. None of those matches didn't get a mention. And the fact that Team Cena versus Team Authority was selected as match of the year over those matches, I, I, got, I call shenanigans on that one. Yeah, and, and I, I guess the reason why they did it is because if you look at Dolph Ziggler was the one who accepted the award, so I think they had wanted to give the award to him. And even though it went to everybody, it was really a Dolph Ziggler, you won that award. So I, I'm guessing that was the reason. So it's... I can understand why it pisses off a lot of people, so I, I kind of just said whatever, and I just I rolled my eyes on, and I said yeah, whatever. For me, for my what the fuck award, I, I had to give it to the uh, the Larry the Cable guy. I, I, the ang- the Grumpy Cat one was <laughs> worse, but that was just stupid, and I was like, well, you know, uh, that was a, one of the worst moments of the year. So, uh, Joe, your thoughts? <laughs> I gotta go with the angry cat. Lord knows I hate cats, but. Every time I read a quote or a picture from on my Facebook, every time I, his my notifications come up with Angry Cat, I got to stop and watch it. So definitely the Angry Cat <laughs> coming from the angry, grumpy wrestling guy. All right, Lance, over to you. I got to go with Team Cena versus Team Authority wins match of the year. No way in hell was this match qualified. Was it a good match? Yes, but one of the best matches of the year? Hell no. James, over to you. I'm going with the match of the year. There's many matches I thought that were better, even ones that was a nominated match of the year. All right. And, uh, Will, over to you. I'm simply match of the year. I mean, grumpy, angry, sleepy, dopey, whatever cat move was in, I don't even know why the WWE even does it, so it's a waste of time. But I'm going to go match of the year. All right. And it's uh, Team Cena versus Team Authority for the match of the year by a landslide. Well, I guess we could all just say, what the fuck on that one? Uh, <laughs> we all did. Yeah, many times. And now we're gonna oh, well, I'm in public right now, so I can't say that. And now we're going to move on to one of HWI's, uh, you know, our own personal ones. It's called the Crash and Burn Award. So first one is uh, the Chris Jericho Steel Cage Dive on Raw. Then we have Dean Ambrose's the Hell, in a Cell, uh, the Hell in a Cell Bump. Then we have Daniel Bryan's Tombstone from, uh, from Kane on the Steel Steps. And then Kane, when he went through the flaming table. Billy, I'm going to go over to you. You know what? There were a lot of, there was a lot of good nominations in there, but I'm going to throw in an honorable mention. Because it, it started off NXT TakeOver Our Evolution with a bang, and, and, and it showed just what Kevin Owens is made of and what he's willing to do and put himself through to entertain the wrestling fans. And that was the leaping dive over the top rope onto C.J. Parker, at NXT TakeOver Our Evolution. A guy that size having that kind of agility to clear the top rope and land a, a flipping suicide plancha on the C.J. Parker, that's a crash and burn to me if, 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 I ever, if I ever saw it. Yeah, you know what? I did see that, and that was one hell of a crash and burn. Um, but you know what? I'm still, if I have to give it for a, a really a, a vote of the year, it's, uh, I, I'm really tossed for the... Um, Dean Ambrose, Hell in a Cell Bump, or the Chris Jericho Steel Cage Dive. You know what? Chris Jericho, he's getting up there in age. And for him to take that kind of a bump, i, I got to give it to him. And I know that that's where the Slammy Awards gave it to him, but I'm going to give it to him. So, um, Lance, over to you. Because it's what I expect. I expect to see some, oh my good God, somebody, somebody crashing through something at a Hell in a Cell. I'm going Dean Ambrose crashing through uh, the Hell in a Cell Bump. Because he did crash through that announce table. May the Spanish announce table rest in peace. Is All right. And, uh, Joe, over to you. You know, again, I'm looking at this link lineup, and as funny as it sounds, Dean Ambrose taking that bump in the Hell in a Cell match. Again, I, I, we all see Mick Foley. We've only seen, we've seen Mick Foley done crazy bumps. We've seen Shawn Michaels do crazy bumps. Uh, but, you know what? I, I Dean Ambrose... Again, for me, I he's gets he's definitely my pick again. And Will, over to you. I'm gonna 
jump on Billy Ship, and I'm going to go Kevin Owens uh, hitting C.J. Parker like he was cotton candy on a pillow. I mean, for those who've known him as Kevin Steen in Ring of Honor, he can hit some spots. No question. I mean, I love Dean Ambrose, but Kevin Owens has to take it. Only been in the WWE for one week. Got the biggest pop at NXT R Evolution. It made C.J. Parker his bitch, so I'm going to go Kevin Owens. <laughs> All right. So now we all have – Billy ended it, and now we have somebody voting for it. So now we actually have two. And, James, over to you. I'm going to go with Hell in a Cell because I never thought to expect to see it again. My honorable mention has to go to Kane because I never expected to them have to frame a table again. Okay. And I think uh, we're pretty much – yeah, uh, so right now, um, even though that the honorable mention was mentioned there, and we he you know, it, it did get two great votes, Dean Ambrose does get the Hell in the Cell uh, win for the H for the HWS Crash and Burn for 2014. And now we're going to move on to the 2014 Batista Award. <laughs> so uh, now we have Brock Lesnar, Batista, Rusev, and of course CM Punk for leaving or getting five, which are anybody chooses to accept it for. Billy, I'm going to kick this over to you first. Well, everybody knows my disdain for Bork Laser and, and the fact that he is just getting so worshipped out there about from 90% of the audience that hates John Cena other than the fact that he's making money for the WWE. I mean, yeah, why would they turn that heel? Why would they change that mechanic? Why would WWE want to stop making money with John Cena? I mean, you know, it's a ridiculous notion. The WWE is making a ton of money with John Cena. Why the hell are they going to change that formula? You know, there's all the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the fact that the fans at first at WrestleMania said that this guy wasn't good enough to beat The Undertaker and beat The Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania, now for all of them, all of a sudden for them to start worshipping the guy, other than the fact that he, he's going against John Cena, and, and the only reason why he has his spot in the WWE right now, because even though Brock Lesnar only has about three or four moves in his moveset, it can't cut a fucking promo to save his goddamn life. It, it, it has to be for Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is just – Paul Heyman could take a box of tissue paper and talk it up into a main event. That's how good Paul Heyman is. And without Paul Heyman in the equation, Brock Lesnar sucks. And I still say he sucks even, he, even though he has Paul Heyman. And so Brock Lesnar is my selection. Uh, Billy, I, I pretty much have to exact. I have to, uh, you know, I, I have to agree with everything you just said there, one hundred and fifty percent. So you know what, he's my pick. Without you know, so there it is, right there. Um, all right, and Joe, over to you. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna join in that, that pick. I'm gonna say Brock Lesnar too, and everybody knows how I feel about it. I've said it time and time again. You know, you need that big monster as a champion. We've had too many John Cena's. We've had too many other guys. It's finally time to go back to what it was, building up a champion, making him defend his belt once in a while, like Hulk Hogan used to do back in the old 80s. It's time to go back to that format. We don't need to see the champion defend his belt every Raw, SmackDown, or pay-per-view. So... And I and again I go with also with what Billy said. The if it if it wasn't for Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar would just be, in my opinion, another jobber. So Paul Heyman should be the one on this list. You know, it, it's it, he brings more to Lesnar than what everybody believes. So my pick, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I again I think we I, I have to agree. Lance, over to you. I gotta go, Batista. Because the fans hate him so much, they took his ass, they writ his ass off. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, he, he did not get a warm reception when he came back. And uh, I, I think it was just because the way he got right back into, you know, uh, the Royal Rumble and, of course, the way he got into WrestleMania. But, all right. And, uh, James, over to you. I'm going to go Brock Lesnar. Uh, y'all, y'all said it all, so Brock Lesnar's my pick. All right. And, Will, over to you. Broke less is more? No, wait, Brock Lesnar. Sorry, I was trying to solve this cryptic code. Yeah, uh, Brock Lesnar has no business making these appearances, coming back, make an appearance, leave, coming back, make an appearance, leave. What is this, a fucking shampoo commercial? What is this? I'm <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Exactly. So, uh, Brock Lesnar wins by a landslide, so he gets a Bautista award. So, I think that's the only award he's probably going to win by the fans. Now, we're going to go do another award that we absolutely uh, brought back this year is Get the Hell Out Award. Uh, and, of course, this will be picks. We have Fandango, Eva Marie, oh. <laughs> Cameron... Oh Rosa. please! Oh please! Pick me first, because don't say the last one yet, because that's going to be okay. My you pick. know what, what? I won't even pick the last one because we know who the last one is. Joe, over to you. Definitely, not only get out of, get the hell out, get out the hell out of wrestling, get go back to being whatever you were before you even got into the wrestling business. You, it's proven time and time again that this person cannot run a successful wrestling company she makes the the most poor the worst decisions the most poor decisions that she makes the the it's like it should be a you poor bitch award (laughs) but the problem is i think she would be only one person on it that's it so i have to say let let's just cut everything let's forget about the other people let's all vote Dixie Carter, guys. My yeah, pick I'm in. Carter. I'm in. Yeah, any other sad thing was if this was picks, we'll just turn, we'll make these a picks and turn this into a vote. And I, you know what? I'm going to vote for Dixie Carter just for you, all right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Billy, over to you. Uh, what else can I say except Dixie Carter? <laughs> oh, we, okay. Lance, over to you. So long, bitch. <laughs> James, over to you. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with uh, Eva Marie. I, I just uh, I, I, I'm honorable mention is Dixie, but Eva Marie, get the hell out of here. Okay, all right. So we'll, we'll have we'll have two people who should get the hell out. So you know what? I'll even make an honorable mention. I'll vote for Dixie Cotton, but I'll have an honorable mention for Eva Marie who should get the hell out. So there you go. I'll third that. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> there's Lance, and now Will, over to you. Dixie Carter, puta la mierda con cara con china de esos dedos. Get the fuck out now. You know, I actually understood some of that. I think we have uh, have a grand slam. Where's George Lopez when you need him? Yeah, for uh, hey, 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 Give me the certificate so like that I can actually take it to Dixie's house and say, here, this is from uh, the fans uh, online and all around the world here. You deserve this. Yeah. We, we, we will give her the, the award. Get the fuck out. <laughs> and now here's another one. The, a brand new award for this year is the Disgruntled Employee Award. And uh, there's only three people on this one. Because uh, if there's more disgruntled employees, we, you know, they can bring them in. Uh, it's CM Punk, Alberto Del Rio, and Rey Mysterio. Now I'm going to start off with this one. Now it's going to be CM Punk for me, guys. We know that Alberto Del Rio has, has had some issues. We know that Rey Mysterio has had some issues. But CM Punk is the celebrity of the disgruntled employees. So I'm going to start off with CM Punk. Just, you know, so... Yeah, if let me just say, Rick, he's one of the most disgruntled employees that's actually made himself the biggest disgruntled employee in the, in all the media, social media, network media, everything. I mean, here's a guy, people have quit the WWE, but this guy took it beyond. Yes, he quit the WWE and made an admission to show everybody that he quit the WWE, and he kept going. And you know what, folks? The more he said, I quit the WWE or hate the WWE or whatever the WWE did to him or he did to them, whichever way you look at it, this guy is making all money from him, from this whole situation. So I think we should, uh, this is like Dixie Carter's vote. I think everybody should go see him punk. Well, you know, and the thing, the thing is, it was like, you know, it, it, he really just, you know, once he had gotten, you know, he couldn't say nothing about it for like 12 months. And once he'd gotten off it, that's when he went into, you know, uh, that's when he had those two podcasts and great. And he's like, you know, he went to the Open Anthony show and he just said, finally, look, because I don't want to talk about it anymore. And the way he said it was, he goes, you know, it was like the last job was like, you know, I, I have no bad feelings for it. It goes, it, now it's like, you know, my ex-girlfriend. I don't want to talk about her no more. It was kind of funny. If you guys get a chance, go listen to it. It's hilarious. It's on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash hardcore wrestling radio. But you know what? I have to agree with you right there. Um, Billy, your thoughts and your pick. I've got to go to CM Punk. Even though I want to throw a, a slight honorable mention out there to AJ Styles. Um, one of the things I was able to talk to with uh, Scrapyard, uh, you know, the uh, former NWA champion Scrapyard Adam Pierce is I got to talk to him a little bit about the situation 
that was going on in TNA at the time. And one thing he did bring up to me is the fact that he felt that what they were doing with AJ Styles in TNA was completely 100% wrong. They were totally misusing the talent, especially when it came to AJ Styles. And we all know how great of a talent AJ Styles is. In fact, you know, to WWE, for them to not pick up AJ Styles, when we know how great of a talent and great of an athlete he is inside of the ring, I think that's just a big mistake. So officially my pick, it is CM Punk for everything, for every, all the reasons you guys have said, but I'm going to throw out an honorable mention out there to AJ Styles. All right, and now of course we have a couple of picks, uh, uh-huh. a couple of topics. That, uh, oh, sorry, Lance, over to you. Well, CM Punk. CM Punk, don't mind me, guys. I'm a little uh, out of it tonight. So. Lay off the fuck it all, Rick. Yeah, yeah, uh, Rick. I, you forgetting, know, you're forgetting people. I'm forgetting people tonight. Don't mind me. <laughs> all right, and James, over to you. I'm gonna go with Punk because you know he walked out at Royal Rumble. We all thought he walked out, but we find out, you know, two uh, both sides. So I had to go with Punk. All right, and uh, yep. So there we go. Um, it, it's a landslide. CM Punk. See this one. Uh, this, one this one was really easy, just like the Dixie Carter vote. Um, I think you might have skipped over a Bay Area MVP person. Will, I thought Will did already got, got his. But no. Will, go ahead. I'm sorry, Will. Go ahead. Why did nobody mention Zack Ryder again? The five of you, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> but. I mean, my heart goes out to Zack Ryder. I mean, WWE let him go. All of you listen to Hardcore Wrestling Radio, let him go. But as far as the votes, I have to go Punk too. I mean, that podcast, fuck, man. I have to listen to it again to make sure that everything what he said was, like, on point. Because, like, like, he had to wait a full year so he could say anything without getting in trouble. And the way that he said it, it was like, holy fuck. All right, now we have the Uport Bassett Award, which is... We have uh, Hornswoggle for getting dressed up as a dang gator. Heath Slater for getting dressed up like Uncle Sam and jobbing to Rusev. Kane dropping like a, a con- concussion cane. Con- I'm sorry, concussions, concessions cane. I can't read tonight either. Uh, Damian Sandow, man of a thousand gimmicks. Adam Rose getting beat up by the bunny. Uh, and, of course, Brodus Clay leaving the WWE and going even to TNA for EC3 sidekick. And then, of course, there's an honorable mention for Damian Sandoz for being the Miz stunt double as, you know, and, of course, that's, you know, getting that shit over. We're going to start over with Lance. Lance, over to you. Well, I got to go with Adam Rose for getting beat up by the bunny and dry humped by the bunny. Yeah, the bunny. you poor bastard. Now, of course, guys, these are picks. These are not votes. So, Joe, over to you. Hey, hey, it, the, the bunny all the way. When Adam Rose... Gets beaten up, gets upstaged by a guy in a bunny suit. You know, that's a poor bastard. <laughs> the yeah. bunny all the way. I told you, bunny in the rumble. Come on, we gotta, we gotta put that out there again. Bunny in the rumble. Oh yeah, with the bunny in the rumble. And keep in mind that the Royal Rumble is gonna be the next uh, pay per view, so we've gotta start remember doing that, guys. Remember, bunny in the rumble. If he, if the, if the bunny's in the rumble, remember you heard it here first at HWR. All right, and uh, James, you first. I'm going to go with uh, Damian Sandow, the man of a thousand gimmicks. All right, what the hell? He's been, he was Mr. Money in a Bank, went job to uh, John Cena, after car, went crashing in, and he went to all those gimmicks. I'm like, what the hell? All right, and Will, over to you. I'm going to give it to the bunny, but Joe forgot one thing. La- the last two, three weeks, I found out who the bunny was. It is former Ring of Honor talent Jimmy Jacobs. So, Joe, you didn't know about that one, good sir. So I'm giving it to Jimmy Jacobs, a.k.a. The Bunny, for the last three weeks. Poor Adam Rose, you poor bastard. Oh, I don't care who's in the bunny suit. I'm just saying that bunny gets over. And, Billy, over to you. The Bunny for slipping Adam Rose's carrot. That didn't sound good, but okay, I'll... I'll, I'll... <laughs> we'll just go with it. I, oh, just, I, just, I knew what you said. That was funny, Bitterly. <laughs> Uh, you know what, and, and I'm going to have to jump on the bandwagon here, but yeah, uh, Adam Rose getting beat up by a bunny, yeah, you, you poor bastard, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm on this one. And uh, the next one is going to be uh, Lance Moss's Controversy of the Year picks. Lance, of course, this is your pick, so over to you. Well, since y'all know I am Mr. Controversy and Scandal over here, so uh, it is 
Alberto Del Rio getting fired over a racist bastard arguing with him. Two, Rey Mysterio wanting out of his contract and WWE screwing with him. Lana wanting a, making a promo mentioning the plane going down and it making the friggin' news. Four, Billy Jack Hayes lawsuit against WWE for Hep C and concussions. And five, CM Punk getting fired from the WWE. All right, so what's your pick? Punk. Punk gets fired, all right. You know what? I'm going to try something a little bit different. Uh, you know, I, of course, that's always been, you know, one of the biggest ones of the year. So I'm going to try to go with Lana making the promo and mentioning the plane going down in the Ukraine because making it in, in the news. Yeah, that's fair. So I'm going to go with that one. Um, Joe, over to you. You know, I've been, I'm thinking here. I'm looking over it. I, you have to say the most controversy of the year has to be Dixie Carter taking – TNA from, and this is just an honorary mention, but taking this out from a good network from Spike TV to another net, to an unknown network. So, if anything, I would like to put that honorary uh, no, nomination in there for Dixie Carter taking her company out of a good network and sending it to Oblivion. I think that's a controversy right there. All right, Billy, over to you. Yeah, I, I got to agree with the whole Dixie Carter thing. I mean, Tina used to be a good, viable product in the wrestling industry, and Dixie Carter has just, in, in, in my mind, just pillars and raped the hell out of that company and out of the talent. And now taking it from a, a well-known network like Spike TV over to a relatively unknown in Destination America, we don't even know if that if that sh- if that channel, that network can really fit the demographic that TNA is hoping to, to find, hoping to get out of that. Despite TV network, they fit that demographic. Destination America, a lesser known channel, we really don't know. And we really, and this could potentially be the end of TNA. So I definitely have to go with that. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Yenyo. I'll even put my name in there for an honorable mention because... And you know what, Rick? Let me add one more thing to this also as well. You know who benefits from this? It's DirecTV because you got to get a premium package. To, exactly. To get this channel so you can watch this obscure wrestling company. So it's not TNA benefits from it. It's not like any the fans are going to benefit from it because people in the UK can't get this. So the only one that's benefiting from it for the time being is Direct TV. Yeah, I agree uh, absolutely. All right, Will, over to you. Oh man, do I really have to answer this? <laughs> Can I go last? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll take. All right, a pass. James, over to you. James. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Um. I'm going to go with Alberto Del Rio because, you know, he gets fired and the racist bastard doesn't get fired until a couple months later. So I'm going with Alberto. All right. James, Joe. James, James, James. Yeah, I'm out for a is getting you. <laughs> All right, well. Take your order. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have to go with Del Rio's firing. And all you guys forgot, the racist bastard's name was Cody Barbieri, the one who ignited the whole situation. And it's sad that he was still employed while Del Rio got fired. Then months later, he leaves. I mean, why does WWE wait such a period of time to fire this asshole? I, I mean, come on now. It's not rocket science. It's racist. Come on. WWE should know better than that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I have to agree, but that's, you know, WWE is trying to sweep you know, things under the rug, and we've talked about this on our previous show on, on previous topics. It's just a, a sucky thing, but, you know, eventually they did fire him when it was all, you know, forgotten, but whatever. It's just WWE for you. And, of course, guys, this is going to be our year-end awards, so we, you know, we want to thank all of you folks for, uh, you know, listening and uh this is going to be it for our 2014 uh, season, and we were going to be taking a, a two-week uh, off. So, um, again, we want to wish all of you uh, a Merry Christmas and, of course, a Happy New Year. Joe, where can everyone find you at? Well, they can find me at Facebook.com Classic Wrestling Association. You can also follow us on Twitter at JNightCWA. At J Knight CWA. And one more thing, if If you guys are celebrating out there, please be careful. Don't drive home drunk. Yeah, absolutely. Please be safe, everyone. Um, We have the incomparable Lance Moss, and you can find him 
at youtube.com slash Lance Moss TV. Lance, what do you got going on? I got album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, Redneck Woman cooking videos, musical equipment reviews, some rants, and starting next year, I will have the archives of controversy and scandals on my channel. So, get on over there and check it out. And of course, we have the wrestling gamer Double B Boudreaux in the house. Billy, thanks for coming in and hanging out with us. Billy, where can everyone find you? What do you got going on? They can find me on a hole in the ground hiding from you, Rick. As always. They, they can find me on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer where my two, late, my two Let's Play series right now are South Park, The Stick of Truth, which Lance Moss thoroughly enjoys. Why, yes, and I of do. course, And a, another series that is just make you scratch your head and say WTF is a Sakura Spirit, and Lance knows what I'm talking about that one as well. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> I'm going to say, who Billy, knew, who about. knew, and let's just say this, who knew that Fox girls like to steal panties? And of course, we have the hardcore wrestling tag team in the house. First, he's Bay Area MVP, and he's got a tag team partner, James from the Big Easy. Guys, what do you got going on? Uh, James is currently uh, donating 100 cheeseburgers to New Orleans Comic Con, in which you guys can see the Green Ranger, Jason David Frank. If James did not know that. I don't, but I don't want to see the would bill. Be would he be donating a side of beignets to go with that? I don't know. But I will be at soundcloud.com slash HWR show. You can find me at my show for HWR in the news. So check it out. That's right, guys. Get on over there and listen. And you can oh. find me on twitch.tv slash fatboy504. And by the way, I'm not going to Comic Con because I do not want to see the bellows. Because remember, they have no talent. Aww. I might go see him. Rick, stop ordering pizzas. Yeah, hey, you know what? I can always want to order pizzas. Nothing wrong with ordering pizzas, especially free pizzas. But you know what? Share and share alike, okay? Absolutely. But you know what? We're going to wrap this up for this edition of Hardcore Wrestling Radio. And of course, for everyone here, I'm your hardcore host, Rick Head, saying we'll see you when we see you. Tonight's broadcast has been brought to you by Fuck It All, 2,000 milligrams. Go and get your prescription today. Thank you for listening to this edition of In The Moment. Make sure you follow us at any one of our locations, whether it's YouTube, Dailymotion, and now SoundCloud.com under the name HWR Show. Until the next time, this is your hardcore host, Rick Head, saying we'll see you when we see you.